All right, guys. Here we are. It's the middle of May, 2022. I know I kind of went MIA on year since uh, I don't know. It was like uh, first week of October for 2021. But uh, what I wanted to do today is just give you a super quick channel update, and then we're gonna go right into the story of how I killed my 2021 uh, 160 inch mainframe eight public land buck. So first off, kind of heading back into 2021. The, the reason the content dropped off was a couple reasons. One, some of you do know I run a production company that's filming and editing for the outdoor industry. And two, um, you know, I just didn't have a lot of content last year. It was honestly a really slow year. So what ended up kind of happening there is the first week or so I didn't have a lot of content, released that one hit list video and uh, really got into just filming other people, doing a lot of my editing and making some side money. That really tied into just, uh, I didn't pull the camera back out come November and it was an unfortunate situation, ended up harvesting uh, the buck in the thumbnail, but uh, we'll get into that in a second. So first off, channel update. Super quick channel update for 2022. Have uh, four or five new guys gonna be joining the team this year. I'm sure they'll release videos here coming into the season. A lot of really good public land hunters, most of them in Iowa. Really excited. You guys are going to be really happy to see some of that content. A lot of these guys are shooting world-class whitetails every single year up the public land. A lot of knowledge coming your way on that end. And uh, for myself personally, I know I've always toyed with filming and you get a couple videos out of me and then I disappear. That won't be a problem this year. I've, uh, I've recruited a, a cameraman. He's going to follow me around this year and we're going to have some great content. You guys are going to have, between me and the team, a lot of good public land whitetail content coming out. Uh, goals to put down some giants this year, get it all on film, and really we're going to have a good year, a lot of content rolling into 2022-2023. Alright, so to jump into the hunt, we're going to make this real quick. I know uh, I don't have any video from it, so I'm not going to sit here and bore you forever. but. Um, Rolling into November 14th, I uh, decided to move out to this spot on, on public land. It's a really big, thick marsh, real tall, uh, CRP type grasses, a lot of high stem count cover. And I'm seeing a, a hot doe out there, probably 140 inch buck was dogging her. I literally had, I don't know, six or seven young bucks, sub 120 inches, trying to fight this one decent 140 and he was fighting them all off for the whole day literally the whole day i sat there morning till night in this one spot it's a pretty risky spot i mean i'm right down in the bedding but i was getting desperate with the time of year and so i just pushed real hard to a spot like i said i, had, I knew i had a lot of uh, bucks on camera in there and and just pushed right down in and seen that hot doe um had a crack at the 140 i decided to pass him that evening and now we're rolling into november 15th November 15th, had another great day. Actually encountered two or three shooters, mid 50s, low 60s. Uh, almost sealed the deal about eight in the morning on one of them. Real nice nine. He was actually coming up behind me and uh, unfortunately, he just, uh, as they do, just he knew something was up and he decided to turn off and head in another direction. So morning of November 16th rolls around. High hopes, decided to move out there. Start moving back into the spot. I left everything in the stand. I get about halfway out to the stand from the uh, the bedding cover, I should say, and I, I bump, I don't know, seven deer on the way in. It was horrible. A couple bumped here, a couple bumped here, and then a couple more when I got right out of my stand. Really thought I ruined the morning. Uh, I was just completely beaten up, torn up. I just didn't know what to do, but I decided I was gonna stick it out anyway. I'm sitting there couple, I think like a button buck, a couple spikes end up rolling by me, some does. Really discouraged. Just thought I had, you know, finally burnt the stand out. I finally did the deal and I was going to have to go look somewhere else. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, I, uh, I was sticking it out to about 10 and I actually had a business phone call with a client <laughs> in the stand at about 9.15 and I ended up hanging up the phone, thinking I'm going to pack everything up, take it down. Some of my stuff was already at the bottom of the tree just before the phone, the business phone call started. And lo and behold, when I hung up and I looked up about 100 yards out in front of me, uh, through the, the tall marsh, I see horns. Real deep chocolate, big bodied deer. And uh, I instantly pull up the binos. I can tell it's a shooter. Uh, at this point, I'm shaking, I'm torn up. Uh, it's one of my first good encounters with a deer that's not 500 yards away or a glimpse or right at dark. So 
I'm super excited. I, I try to pull what I can up from the bottom of the tree. I get my bow back up. I get my calls back up. Um, most of my jackets and my ropes, my extra gear for mobile hunting was down at the bottom of the tree. And uh, hit the horns together. Just tickle him a little bit to see if he's interested. You can tell he's looking, but he's not sure. He actually does this big loop all the way to my west. He is about 60 yards out in front of me, but he's on the back side of this high stem count, uh, little willow stems, and he can't see anything. So he actually ends up doubling back, coming back around, and goes right back out to where I initially seen him. And uh, I tickle the horns one more time, and I just give him a real deep grunt and a snort wheeze and I push the agenda on him. And uh, <laughs> lo and behold, he just decides he's gonna, he's gonna commit this time. And he starts to work his way in, kind of like he's gonna come in downwind but uh, it opens up over there, so he ends up hitting the kind of the line of the brush, and he's beelining right towards me. And I'm at this point, I'm I'm set and I'm ready. I'm not sure if he's going to go to the right side of the tree, downwind, or the left side of the tree. And he ends up picking the worst possible trail, coming right straight to the base of my tree. And I, I can't draw back. There's this limb. There's one limb right in front of me. He walks straight to the base of my tree, three yards, turns, looks at my gear on the ground, looks straight up at me in the tree. We lock eyes for probably a solid minute and a half. You could tell, or I could tell, you could see his eyes get huge. He just, he knows he's, he's done something wrong and this is a horrible position to be in. Uh, <laughs> all of a sudden the twig snaps about 30 yards behind me. I don't know what it is. It gets him to look down and away. I instantly draw back on him. He does that slow step turn like he's gonna turn and bound off. And as soon as he turned away, angled in, I smoked him. I mean, I put a great shot on him. He literally ran 35, 40 yards out in front of me, stood there, wobbled, fell down. First buck I've ever seen in my life, uh, first deer I've ever seen in my life, just fall down in front of me with an archery shot. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was amazed, I was ecstatic, couldn't believe I got it done. And uh, then I heard another twig snap behind me, I looked behind me and there was a beaten up old bruiser of a buck, probably only 130 inches, but you could tell he was a fighter. And uh, he, he must have heard that and he was actually coming in and if it wasn't for him, that buck and me, you know, he probably would have took off. I think he, he knew the game was up, but uh, that, that buck behind me saved me. And so that big bruiser, he jumps off, and I end up getting down and recovering that buck. That image is, you know, right there on the screen. Uh, solid buck, that dagger and that split's why I thought he had character. I really wanted to take him and harvest him for that. Um, just a, an amazing buck. He scored 160 uh, as a mainframe eight. Couldn't be happier with him. Another great Iowa public land buck. Moving past the story here, I don't want to bore you guys too much. This year, like I said, got a cameraman, got multiple guys for the team. It's going to be a good year for content. I'm really pushing for it. I, I have the entire season off for work. I'm not going to work. Uh, it's focused. I'm just dedicating and focusing on content for you guys for YouTube here. Uh, also, coupled with that, I'm partnered with a show called Arrival this year. They're on MOTV and uh, a few other places, you can find them on Realtor 365 and any hunts that I produce this year for the public land is actually going to end up going over there as well. So you could be able to find content there, you could be able to find content here on my YouTube and I really hope that you guys uh, enjoy what we're going to put out this year and uh, forgive me for not getting this, this second Iowa buck on film. But like I said, we're making a lot of moves and this year is going to be a fantastic year. You're really going to want to watch this year. We're, we're going from zero to hero production value. I'm putting a lot of time and money into this and and uh, in the end I think it's going to be a fantastic show and, and I'm excited to, to take this journey with everybody. Thanks again for watching. This has been Public Land Whitetails and I'll catch you guys here in a couple months when we start, uh, start doing summer tasks for whitetails on public land. Thanks again.